Father, we thank you because you are a good God. Thank you for being so faithful. Thank you for how you've kept your church in the midst of all the uncertainties. Thank you for being the rock that never fails. Lord, even this hour we commit unto you, we ask that you guide, lead, and direct us by your Holy Spirit. Speak to us. Let your word heal. Let your word deliver. Let your word transform safe souls. Let your word be a blessing unto us. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Last Sunday, we started a series on winning in crisis. Winning in, how do you win in crisis? And uh, I started by saying that when you are in crisis, uh, that you do a 3B checklist. I just want us to remind ourselves the 3B checklist. What was the first B? Say it loud. Bleeding. You are bleeding or you are bruised. In a crisis, you'll be bleeding or you'll be bruised. Number two, B. You'll be broken. For most people, you'll be broken. When crisis shows up in your life, whatever be the crisis, you'll be broken. Now, number the third B. Breathing. You will be breathing. You'll be breathing. That means you are alive. Amen. Now, as long as you are breathing and you are aware that you are breathing, then there is hope. Hallelujah. That means you cannot afford to stay down. No matter what, your marriage failed, your, your finances are down, your, your job, you lost a job, your health is failing. As long as you are breathing, that means you can get up. You can turn that crisis around. Hallelujah. Now our team scripture this morning we've, we've taken from Philippians 4 verse 6. It says be anxious for nothing but in everything, in everything, in every situation you see yourself crisis in everything in everything what do you do? But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Now, go over to the message translation of that scripture. If you can get it out. Okay. It says, don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, you pray. When you see yourself in a crisis, instead of worrying, you what? You pray. Let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers. Letting God know your concerns. Hallelujah. Now, interestingly, go to the next verse, verse 7 of that. You can see the message translation. Look at what it said. Verse 7. Before you know it, say it loud and clear. Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together. Hallelujah. For good, before you know it, everything will what? Come together for good. Will come and settle you down. It's wonderful. What happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of your life? Hallelujah. So the first is said, be anxious for nothing. Then instead of being anxious, you pray. You, you commit everything to God. And finally, the best someone says, before you know it, everything will turn around. And that shall be your testimony too. In the mighty name of Jesus. So how do we win in crisis? We want to drop three lessons from that scripture. From Philippians 4 verse 6. Media team, listen and walk with me with the scriptures. 
few this morning. Hallelujah. Now, what, what we should know is that every crisis, in every crisis, there is an opportunity. Crisis creates an opportunity. One, you may say, for a transformational change. You must know that there is an opportunity in every crisis. I started last Sunday by saying that during the crisis, we see people getting themselves into the top richest you know, men in the world. Some, you know, some people changed their life all around. So in crisis, there's an opportunity for you to make life in it. Whatever way it comes. So what do you do? See an opportunity in every crisis. See an opportunity in every crisis. I, I may give you maybe one instance. In 2012. Let me see the answer. I've been here with us from 2011 12. 2011 12. If you've been just or not, you can wave your hand. If you've been here, one, two, three. Few, yes, okay. Thank you. Clap for yourselves. So in 2012 November, we bought this building. We bought this building. And somebody gave us, we have raising money to buy the building. Cut the story short. Somebody gave us a loan of a loan of 40,000 pounds. Interest-free loan. Oh, Pastor, you want to buy this building? It's a good thing. I have this, this 40,000 pounds. Just come have it. Don't worry. Get the building. No pressure. Anytime you want it, just give us some little money. No interest. And we rejoice and all that. Just give us, at the time you are able, just give us whatever you want. The church, give us whatever you want back, you know. We're happy. We bought the building. Then suddenly, to cut the long story short, 2016, from nowhere, numbers were dwindling at that time. Life, there was crisis. Along all our churches in the UK, not just Chapel of Grace, all of our churches in the UK, across from the numbers, numbers were coming down. It was like that across the churches in the UK. Then summer, summer, we just had this call. I need my money all once. Hallelujah. Pastors, we are not as, I mean, as pastors, we are receiving salaries. There is no money for even salary for our little minimum wage. We went, there was nothing enough. So all we could do is to manage to pay the mortgage to open the doors. One, two, three years, there was nothing we could, we are struggling to even get at least what we can, as little wage that we can. We've emptied our account to open the doors by paying the mortgage. We've emptied our children's account to make sure that the mortgage is being paid to maintain the doors that are open. And that means the person that loaned us, we need our 40,000 what? All once, immediate. Is that a crisis? If that's not one, then tell me which one is a crisis. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I'm not stopping here at local level. We traveled down to the place and Pastor Andrew and I spoke to the person, this couple, and said, please, please, the understanding was that it's little by little. And we are even in, intending to give back to you. He said, hold on, don't worry, don't be under stress. Just let the church you know. Be at peace and continue. Why this sudden pressure on us? And before we could know it, it's written to our central office back up in London. We were called to London while you are enjoying yourselves. Pastors are not having sleep. Going to London to answer queries and all that and all that. And I said, Lord, have mercy. I'm trying to take us to where what crisis really means. Let's continue quickly. I'll come back to the story. Do you want to hear the story? Okay, let's continue on. Some strategies during crisis. Number one, a commitment to prayer. A what? 
not just commitment, a deep commitment to prayer. A deep commitment to prayer. Thessalonians 5.17 Quickly, run with me. Me that in. First Thessalonians 5.17 Hallelujah. Praying what? Without season. Pray without season. A deep commitment to prayer. I can go on that and that. Pastor Andrew and I, we had our son suddenly diagnosed of cancer, stage four, November 2018. Six months, she was out of church. Crisis. If you say that's not crisis, then tell me what is crisis. Amen? A deep in a time of crisis as a believer a deep commitment to prayer is required of you a deep commitment to prayer now give me verse 11 of that that seems chapter 5 verse 11 you're going to walk with me very very fast today hallelujah It says, therefore, comfort each other and edify one another, just as you, just as you also are doing. You need a commitment to prayer to stay at peace in a time of crisis. A commitment to prayer. So. We started praying back to the first story. Answering phone calls, traveling out of Bradford, with all going answering questions, with all that is expected from the superiors. And God started speaking. Now, note this quickly. Prayer is the believer's greatest weapon. And if you've heard me, I'll say it again. That even when someone is a sinner, if the person has a deep, sincere prayer life, don't mock at the person. If he goes on his own and cries, to God for mercy like David he can still become a friend of God hallelujah if he's sincere enough to say God I failed the world is mocking at me kill her I'm a, an adulterer and all that he was still able to come back to God and became one man that walked closely with God to the point that God said no from you, I will have my Jesus. You will you'll be surprised the kind of people you will see in heaven if you will get there. And I believe you will get there. Don't write anybody up. Mostly someone that can sincerely pray to God. Don't write anyone off. That's why, you know, sometimes when I see believers, now we have the social media world, that when they see men of God or women of God fall, they are so excited, quick to go there and just destroy. If that man can go back on his own and cry and sincerely repent, God is the merciful God. Ephesians 2, 4 says, God, Ephesians 2 4 says, God is rich in mercy. Hallelujah. While you were yet a sinner for you, God came for you. He allowed his son Jesus to die for you. While you, if he has withheld his mercy, most of us wouldn't be here. By this time, you'll be drunk. You'll be in the gutter. Am I right? If he has withheld mercy, 
then how dare you write people off immediately, quickly? No matter what. Do you remember that there's a woman in the hall of faith? An alot. Rehab. An alot was found in the hall of what? When Judas, number 12 man with Jesus, missed it. Our God is what? Rich in mercy. Prayer is the believer's greatest weapon. Now, I've always said it, that prayerlessness is a sin. And when I, when I teach on prayer and I say that, people question it. That if I don't pray, I'm already sinning. Yes. First Samuel. First Samuel. 23. Moreover, as for me, as for me, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray. Prayerlessness itself is a sin, according to that scripture. May we not sin. In that aspect, in the mighty name of Jesus. James 5, verse 16. James 5, verse 16. The effectual fervent prayer. The effective, effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. So the first place you have, what you have to do, number one, is what? Come to the place of prayer. The world may say that you are gone, but you go to God. Hallelujah. If God be for you, who can be against you? Hallelujah. If God is on your, on your side, if God is interested in your case, if you can run to God, draw near to him, he will draw near to you. Hallelujah. So the first place you have to go, no matter the situation, I can tell you stories. For those that have been here, we were to get married, 2015, 2005, if I'm right. Amen. 2005. I'm giving those many stories now. 2005. Three weeks to the wedding, announced, everyone ready, flights are booked, friends, family booked flight. Three weeks to the wedding, as required by law, went to the registry to inform the registry that I'm marrying their daughter, the daughter of the land. If you know what I mean. Got there, normal registry, normal procedure, but was, we were shocked to say to, to be informed that we need an approval, a certificate of approval from the home office if I could marry Pastor Andra. And that the quickest it can come is the answer. The quickest we can get the answer is 13 weeks. The quickest. And here we are three weeks to the wedding. What do you do in that crisis? And there is, the system here is, is one that you cannot use one connection. There is no connection. It's you and God. Came back home, but I started crying. I went as a man tried to be strong. I started crying too silently. Amen. Silently. Now everybody has now shifted back. Is God in this thing? Is it not of you that young man that want your own way? Everybody, everybody that, of course, nobody knew except the pastors. They started taking themselves out of it. You are now on your own. You said it's from God. Now prove that it's from God. Maybe that will take me to the second point quickly. Psalms 46 verse 1. I think I mentioned this last Sunday. God is our refuge and strength. 
a very present help in trouble. Hallelujah. That should excite you. God is already present before the trouble. He's a very present help in trouble. Then why don't you run to that God first? So number two point, number one, a commitment to prayer is required. Deep commitment. Pray deeply. Number two point quickly is remain joyful. Remain joyful by immersing yourself in the word of God. You can find joy in the word of God. Hallelujah. Remain what? Joyful. In our case, we, we sat down, what do we do? I said, okay. Sister, as I then, sister, go and search the scriptures. Bring three, three Bible verses. I will go and study too. Three Bible verses that we can stand on. Psalm 119, verse 116. It says, that is my favorite scripture in the Bible. It says, uphold yourself. In the word. Uphold me according to your word that I may live and let me not be ashamed of my hope. Uphold me. Let me stand by the reason of the word of God. Hallelujah. Uphold me according unto thy word that I may live and let me not be ashamed of my hope. I love that scripture. And, that's as, and sometimes I will literally pick my Bible those days. Now we have iPad. Now we can't stand on iPad. I will stand on the Bible and stand on it when I know that the challenge is too much. I will open the scripture and stand on the Bible and say, Lord, I stand on your word. That forever, O oh Lord, your word is what? Settled. Heaven and earth, there can be all kinds of crises, but you remain the same. You remain sure. Hallelujah. For in our case, we went, she, she went, brought three scriptures. I went, brought three scriptures, and the three scriptures were the same. Number one, Jeremiah 32, 27. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me to do? When you get that kind of scripture, you know that God is in it. Number two, if I'm right, Luke 18, 27. What is impossible for men is possible with God. Luke 18, Jeremiah 32, 27. That's the first one. 32, 27. Then Luke 18, 27. The things which are impossible with men are possible what? With God. And you must know that for your, in your life, in your life crisis situations. And the last scripture we, uh, we came up with was John 14, 27. Peace I give to you. Peace I live with you. Not as the world gives. Therefore, do not be afraid. Peace I live with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives. Do I give to you? Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Be joyful. Be what? Joyful. To cut that long story short, in that case, three days to our wedding. Because things must go on. Things were going on. It's only we that know the, the real situation. You know you can be, you can, you can fake life. Meanwhile, you know that you are in deep trouble. Others are going shopping, buying their suits and gowns and dresses. Meanwhile, the celebrant himself is in what? He doesn't know where he stands. Three days, and the Lord showed to me. We are praying. I was going to my PhD office, studying, looking for a word from my general overseer. Then you have the Holy Ghost service, they call it the Arch. No, everything was transcribed, not YouTube then. You can know that I'm in the old age. Then there was no YouTube. 
you were born in YouTube age. Amen. So the Holy Ghost service there was transcribed. It can be 50 pages. From let less somebody shout hallelujah to the ending, closing grace. You read it. You read it. Not even to listen to service, you will not listen. Those days we read. And God showed me, I've told the youth. I've told the youth, just I spoke with them on Saturday and I spoke with them some of them this morning. God showed me this on Friday night as past chapel of grace. That we were in this big auditorium with a balcony, balcony field, bottom field with thousands. And then at the time of the world, as I stand here, I see vacant seats. Mostly in the ground floor. And I look around, we're in the place where by the other side of the where we were was a field, a field. And I see people going, playing football and playing games at the time of the world. And God said, That's where most people are. They are not connecting with the word of God. And that's why you see all kinds of situations in the church. I've spoken to the youths on Saturday, and I've spoken to some of them again this morning, this same word. So what do you do with your time? With the one hour, the two hours that we have here together. Now in the time that we don't take notes. I've said it before here that if you see yourself, if you see your house burning and you had opportune to go back to pick something, what will you pick? I've asked that question here. If you see your house on fire and you have a last chance to go in to pick something on hot what will you pick ask yourself that question some of you your degrees you know what there's degrees you can call the university they will give your degree back am i right your certificates money money is not in in the house now it's in the bank it's digital You are thinking now. I can see that you are thinking. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. You are thinking. Should I leave you thinking? Maybe next Sunday you tell me what you, what you pick. And I said that in my, if it's me, and I, that, that is my conscious, I will go, I will pick my salmon notes. Those that I wrote with Anne that are not in any digital format. My notes, and I have them, my salmon notes. Did you see the notes of when, so when I saw this great man of God sharing on notes recently in his conference, Bishop Yedepo, and I said, that is it. I've long been saying that over and over before I, I, I saw him doing that. When he brought his salmon notes, diaries of, diaries of years, every year, maybe 12, 3, 12, 20, salmon notes that he will be writing. One week, that, note, that diary is full of another one again. For now, we don't have, we don't even have notes. And we want to live life. Be joyful. Immerse yourself in God's word. There is refuge in that word. Proverbs 30 verse 5 quickly. Proverbs 30 verse 5. Proverbs 30 verse 5. Let's run this up quickly. Proverbs 30 verse 5. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield to those who put their trust in him. Hallelujah. Every word of God is pure. As I was studying in that our crisis, Pastor Andrew and I, then I saw one of a word from my general overseer, Pastor Ia And the word was the bigger the problem, the bigger the testimony. Hallelujah. Based on our scriptures that we were standing on, and that word came in, the bigger the problem, the greater will be the testimony. I shouted, Hallelujah. On the Wednesday night to the wedding, 2 a.m., Jerabat, in my dream, it showed up to me, it was wearing a white up and down, and he said to the secretary, Can you bring that fax that is meant for Akbo? He took the fax from the secretary. Then it was fast, not a scanning of documents. Then it was fast. 
and he took the verse and gave it to me. And I woke up from my sleep. I looked at my bed. I was living by the Catholic chaplaincy at the university there. Opposite the university. Number one, Ashgrove. Amen. 2 a.m., I came down to the door whether there's any made delivery. There was no midnight delivery. I walked the royal mail then, so I know when they deliver mails. But then, I thought God has made a miracle. That's not a miracle. There was a 2 a.m. delivery. None. Early morning, 9 a.m., 10 a.m. for delivery time. They came. None. None from the home office. Friday morning, waited for the delivery. Came. None. Now, my sister from Australia has arrived with her husband children. My in-laws have come from Northern Ireland. Grandfather, mother, our Pastor Andra's brother is here and our niece, they've all come. Mother, they've all come. Aunties, they've all come. Friends have come from across the world. My friends have come, traveled from London. Family have come now. Friends from Russia, friends from Netherlands, they've all landed. Weddings to go on. Meanwhile, the celebrant is what? In crisis. Now, the quickest way we could get to you know, just to get this right was to have a church of England, which is approved by law. Thank God, God answered our prayers. We got the church of England. Where you stay, where I stay, by law, where you stay, to approve whether they have a date on that day, whether they have a slot. Thank God for the vicar. He said, No, I'm free. You can have it. If that is required by law, which is required. So we went there. We booked 10 a.m. Our service officially was in Pastandra's church was 11 a.m. So we booked for a 10 a.m. One hour before our main service. And you've heard my story. For those that are not that are new, I'll conclude it quickly. In the morning of the wedding, we went to the Church of England, but my joy was not full. I needed that approval. Even though I can do it legally in Church of England but I needed the approval. Early morning, we went my house by eight internationals, an Argentine, an American, a Kenyan, Ugandan, Ghanaian, a Colombian, an Italian, an Irish guy. We were about nine, eight, nine. Then the Reverend Father, an, an Irish gentleman, with the hall, they've all left the house for the wedding. And I've gone to by faith. Then my friend came. My friend, he came here. He's, just, he's in South Africa now. AFTP. He was coming to be a bright man or what? A gross man. A gross man. <laughs> and early in the morning, he came from Milton Keynes and to take my air shiver. And he, he went. He came back to drop it. When he came, there was nobody in, the, in my house. And he saw a DHL man. And by DHL, somebody has to sign it. And he met that man. Oh, this is for Akbo, and there's nobody in the house. So he signed it. And he was on, the, on his way to the wedding. But we've already gone. I was already standing in the hall waiting for Andrea to come from there. And here, my friend, he didn't know what's happening. They brought one parcel to me. So this parcel, I came to drop the shave and I met a DHL man and I signed for it. This is for you. And I opened it and this is the approval. <laughs> Hallelujah. In crisis, what do you do? Number one, a deep commitment to prayer. Number two, what? Maintain your joy. Joy in the word of God. For our church case, quickly on that story, I came from London one morning after being talked to from all corners by superiors. Ministry is at stake. Personally, my life is at stake. My character is at stake. I've taken somebody's 40,000 pounds. We used to, in that part of the down payment, now, I came and I said, what do I do? And 
packaged. Told the young man on a Sunday like this after service, nobody knew what's happening. I said, Young men, about eight, nine of them, bring all the envelopes in the church. That's since the church started. All the envelopes. They brought all the envelopes, boxes. And I said, Okay, all the names on A's, put the A's. Well, I mean, we just walked here, just here. All the A's, in one, all the names with A's, B's. We started sorting from 20 when we started till that particular day. The call lost three short. We put in our first gift aid and we asked for the 3,000 pounds given to us by Easter the next year, 2017. I wrote the check of 40,000 pounds for the first time in my life and gave it to the to this what? Once there is a God he is too faithful to fail. With, no, with the church, not, nobody knew what was happening. Because as I said, if I do any fundraising, the remaining people will run. Hallelujah. Who do you run to when you are in crisis? Yours may not be a £40,000 pressure. Yours may just be what? Some 5000 School fee tuition. Five thousand left or installment, whatever it be hit. Yours may be three thousand, four thousand, and your life you are what? Hallelujah. A deep commitment to prayer. Number two, what did I say? Maintain joy. Finally, 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 finally. Be courageous and very strategic. I think I've already mentioned that now in my, in my story. Amen. Be what? Be courageous and very strategic. That's not the time to what? Do trial and error. No. In crisis, there's no time for trial and what? Because every day, the time, the time, the time, time is of very utmost importance. To any step you are taking, it must be, it must lead to success. Every step you are taking at that crucial hour means a lot. It's life, it's a lifeline. That's the word. It's what? A lifeline. Be courageous. Be very, very courageous. That's why in Joshua, Joshua 1, Joshua chapter 1, yes. You no, know, he kept he kept telling the life of Joshua coming in after Moses. God was speaking. Be courageous. Five verse five verse nine. Be all there. Be very courageous. Be very courageous because you are in the battle. Moses has come this far, but they couldn't make it from his land. You are taking over. Philippians three verse twelve to fourteen. We read last Sunday. Not that I have already attained or. I'm already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. When I was dancing on that my wedding day, people were looking at, why is he dancing like this? It's not just wedding. We finished, do you know what we did? We finished the All Saints wedding aspect of it, 10 to 11. By 11, we went to Pastor Andras Church. Everything went up. Those that didn't know about that wedding, they came to the main one. The main one that's already held before the moon, they thought that that's the main one. They, 11 o'clock, we went there again, another one. Two, two church, two, 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 two church weddings, the same day. Unique. Yours were just one. In Bradford, the same. Finish one church, this in, and we move to the next place, and we continue on. The pastor knew what's happening. No other person knew what was happening. We told the people, they came. Those that could come, about, we had about maybe 40, 50 people in them, or maybe 60, 70 people in them. In the, those that had, they came to the first one. We said, no, the wedding is starting earlier. First. There's one in all said They came. They came in their numbers. Then from there, we came to the Pentecostal one in Pastor Andrew's church. Big Pentecostal church and wonderful Holy Ghost anointing. It was like 
a deliverance service. Joyful, praise. Meanwhile, for those in the first service, didn't know. Those even the main, they don't know why they change or whatever. Strategy. We did. Amen. Hallelujah. God is too faithful to fail. You two have a unique wedding. As a you two that are believing God for a unique wedding, yours will be unique. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will have a unique celebration. In the name of Jesus. So finally, as a roundup, now, be careful what you say during a season of crisis. During the what? Season of crisis. We can as well talk ourselves out of everything. In both challenges, the church one and that of our personal one, we can as well talk ourselves out of it that we are finished. No, Jesus said it is finished. It is finished. IT, not I am finished. You are not finished. Amen. It, the problem is finished. He has paid the price for you. Hallelujah. It is finished. Declare it is finished. No matter the crisis, it is already finished. You have to rejoice. Amen. He has paid the price. No matter what you will encounter in life. And that is why our strength, that's where, with that, what we had in our day, in our wedding case, that was, we agreed as a couple that no matter the challenge that we will face in life, if God did that while we we're about getting married on our wedding day, then whatever comes our way in life, we still trust our God that there will be a way out. And that was how we, we managed to get that, uh, this, the 40,000 pounds challenge out of the church. And we continued life. Amen. You too, no matter what comes away, God will make a way for you. In the mighty name of Jesus.